founder and chief executive of the Music Man Project, a music education service specifically for children and adults with learning dis disabilities. Uh, and he's receiving the British Empire Medal. David, good morning and congratulations. Well, good morning. Thank you very much. I'm very excited. I'm going to start by asking you first about how you felt receiving the BEM for services to people with special needs. How did it feel? Well, it, it came out of the blue. I, I, I got an email uh, and I read it through. And, you know, you sort of read things twice or even three times to make sure it, it, it's what you think it is. And it was just an absolute, you know, a, a lovely surprise uh, and one which I find really highly motivating. Now, we've spoken before on BBC Essex, David, about the Music Man project. It, it really is um, quite unique. If people haven't come a, across what you do, I mean, you, you were a, a, a first for the country, weren't you? Yes, yes. I believe we were the, the first um, ever full-time that's a music education and performance service specifically with learning disabilities because as, I, as, I, as that... As that name suggests, it's a real focus on, on music education with a purpose of then, then performing. Uh, and, and to set up something that is just specifically for that on a full-time basis is, was, was completely unique. Uh, and so, so, so what we do is, you know, we, we teach our students to sing, to sign, to play musical instruments, I write original music for them. And then we get them to perform at the London Palladium, the Royal Albert Hall, and, and anywhere we can. And, and extreme is, is Broadway in New York. I think it's fabulous how you managed to get them to perform at the, the, the massive venues that you do. And, and the project yes. is spreading, isn't it? I mean, you know, not only Essex, there's Suffolk, there's London, even India. I mean, where else is it operating? Yeah, so, so it's, it's, I think it's across about 14 different regions in the UK now. I mean, there's obviously Essex and, and, and based here in Southend, was, it's, it's the headquarters and the original one, and that's run by Southend Main Cap, a wonderful charity that have have just made this possible for me um, but but the Music Man project has spread now right? there's a huge operation in Kent we've got uh, Canesham down in Bristol way uh, there's one in Scotland so I mean, it's all literally all across the country and as you say um, I was able to, in the last five years to then take my teaching model right across the world so the, we managed to reach uh, South Africa India, Nepal, the Philippines, and last November, it was November 2019, uh, I even started one off in New York. Uh, so it was really now a, an international music service for people with learning disabilities. Very proud uh, in, in Essex yeah. we are, David, of, of, of what you've yeah. done. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and it's not just about the performance side of it, is it? I mean, it's about kind of raising awareness of accessibility in, in theatres and, and challenging oh, some misconceptions. Absolutely. Um, I mean, there's one thing you might have heard, you know, about accessible performances where people with disabilities can go and watch uh, professional shows, you know, with the lights on and, 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 and the, some, none of the bangs and crashes that, that might put them off. But what we do is accessible performers. We are actually making, uh, you know, a quite a lot of uh, big difference, I think, to people's perceptions. Because you can go to, a, to the Albert Hall like last year and 3,000 people saw 200 of our musicians from right across the country performing music, mostly original music. Uh, and so that breaks down so many barriers because... Uh, you can imagine if you've got a learning disability, it's not every day you get the chance to perform at the Palladium or perform to the, a member of the Royal Family or break a Guinness World Record or perform at the Royal Albert Hall. It's, it, these are huge steps for them. Uh, so, you know, what I've done, and it's not just me, it's the whole team around me. I mean, this, this award is really accepted on behalf of everybody at the Music Man Project. Uh, and, and, and we manage to sort of help uh, and facilitate our musicians to, to entertain you know people in their thousands at these wonderful venues well it's it's wonderful to hear about what you're doing thank you and well done on the british empire medal david stanley from uh, leon c founder and chief executive of the music man project and hospital radio chelmsford working together for your festive entertainment it is michelle and lindsay in the studio keeping you company until 10 we are looking at awesome achievements aren't we we certainly are and they have been some as well yes and uh, right now on the phone i am joined by david stanley who just happens to have added the uh, the title bem at the end of his name Hello, David. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, Happy New David. Year to you both. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah. So, um, David, 
tell mm. tell the listeners a little bit about the organisation. That I, is it true that you set it up? Yes, I, I, I did. So the Music Man Project is a full-time music education and performance service specifically for children and adults with learning disabilities. Uh, and about 20 years ago, uh, I had just one student, um, a lovely chap called Tony with Down syndrome, and I taught him a bit of piano, and, and that led on to five or six students with the local charity South End Mencap. And I, I turned to my small group of students, and this is 20 years ago, and I said, one day you'll play the Albert Hall. And it was a bit of a joke, really. But as time went on, and, it, and I had more and more students, and I, I started a weekly music school, uh, I suddenly thought to myself, do you know what? They could do this. You know, we, could, we, could, we could get together and do this. And, and then in 2012, uh, I left my job as a full-time secondary school teacher. As a, as a, I'd reached the position of deputy head at the time, but I left all that behind to start the Music Man Project uh, as a full-time, you know, every day of the week, you know, five hours of teaching every day of these students. And then uh, last year at the Albert Hall, we performed with 200 of my Music Man Project students taken from right across the UK in our debut in front of 3,000 people at that iconic concert hall in London. So it just shows you dreams can come true if you think big right at the beginning. Wow. wow. It is an iconic venue, isn't it? Yeah. Why, why the Albert Hall? Why not uh, like Wembley or, or one of the <laughs> other venues? Well, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I, I'm a classical musician. I was trained at the Royal Academy in Guildhall ah. and King's College London, all these great places. So for me, that's my O2, if you like. It, it, it's my place that I would dream of performing. Um, and, and apart from a little bit of a, when I was young, I got a chance to sing there in a choir, like lots of people do. But to, to actually have my own show there, and, mm. and the, the concert was mostly my music that I'd, I'd composed, uh, was a huge ambition for me personally. So, it, it, you know, it, it was on behalf of this community of, of, of musicians with disabilities, but it was also for me, it was a chance for me to, to get there and, and, and fulfil my dream. And it took a long time, you know, it wasn't a matter of that a year passes and then we get to the Abbey Hall. It took 20 years and it took shows at the Cliff Pavilion in South End. Uh, we then did the London Palladium twice and then we built up to the Abbey Hall because it's obviously such a bigger venue and, and, and required so many more students and people to fill it. So you, you say you, you used a lot of your own um, compositions. Did you put mm. in some uh, like covers as well? Yes, there are a few. We do a lovely version of Love Shine a Light, actually, the Katrina and the Waves hit. Um, and we performed that actually in our 2017 Palladium show, and it, it won an award in, in New York uh, for, for best ver cover version by a, a group of people with disabilities. Um, and actually, uh, Kimberly Rowe, who I believe wrote the song, he actually wrote a, a, a short note to us saying it was the best use of his song he could ever imagine uh, for it to be performed by people with learning disabilities. So I thought that was really humbling. Um, so we do do some covers, but m mainly I, I, I write the music myself because I can tailor it specifically to the students and, and their talents and, and what they need to do to learn. It, it's, it's very much an educational vehicle as well. Yeah. Performing and showcasing. And is it what kind of instruments do you get your your students to work on? Is it percussion or? Yes, very accessible ones, Michelle. So it's um, they sing and they sign, um, but they also play drums and and glockenspiels and tambourines and maracas and you know wood blocks and ukuleles and so they play a variety of those accessible handheld percussion. But they, it's very important that they, they play those instruments at the right time. They play the right instruments at the right time, the right rhythms. So it's not a sort of let's all just shake along and make some music and isn't that lovely. Mm. They actually have to learn when, what and how, just like any other musician. And that's really the key to it. Yeah, and I think it's far more enjoyable to do that, mm. isn't it? For, for the, the engagement of, of a student learning music, it's, it's more, more involved. Absolutely, and and they've gone on because of that. They've gone on to do some, you know, huge things. We we broke a Guinness World Record ourselves um, in on the 15th of October in 2017 for the largest ever triangle ensemble. So the Music Man Project, which all started and is based here, the headquarters is in Essex. We are the official Guinness World Records holders for the largest ever triangle ensemble, wow. which I think wow. we call. Cool. That's amazing. <laughs> so, so you got an honour then, and uh, yes. who nominated you? Did you find out? 
No, I've got no idea. There's a number of people that have been mentioning it. And you know um, how it is with these things. A lot of people, they come to your concerts or they see you teaching and they go, oh, you should get an award for this and all that. And you sort of go, well, that'd be lovely or thank you or, you know, it's not up to me. And then suddenly the, the, the time passes and then I assume lots of people are inputting and actually, you know, bothering to write to... MPs or however, however you do this yeah. um, must have must have worked. Um, and then I, I got a, an email at the beginning of December um, with, with the good news, and it was it was I was surprised. I was really really uh, happy because you know when you do something for for, for, for so long uh, and you take risks in your life to, to make that change to make something happen. Um, then to get a, a recognition, mm. um, I've been telling lots of people you know today and, and yesterday that. <laughs> It's really motivating for me. It sort of spurs me on, and it, I know it's going to open more doors for my students because after the Albert Hall, we want to perform on Broadway. We've been rehearsing music to go to New York and, and do a concert tour, um, but that takes a lot of funding. It takes a lot of support and help mm. from people, and particularly at the moment, this is not going to happen, is it? But when, it, when we are able to do something like that, the fact that I have an award from the Queen in the New Year's Honours list, I really hope that that will make people stand up and take notice of us even more. Brilliant. And um, so it all has to be a secret, doesn't it? When you first find out, you're not allowed to tell anyone at all until yeah, the list is published. So yeah. what, was the first thing, what was the first thing you did when you found out? And how on earth did you manage to keep a secret that long? <laughs> yeah. Well, I told my wife, I couldn't keep that in, and I'm sure I've not broken any laws by <laughs> telling my wife. Uh, so, so I was able to tell her. But no, I, it's really weird. You sort of, you want things and you build up for things, and then when something really successful happens, you then sort of go, I go a bit sort of quiet and go, oh, no, lovely, that's really exciting. Oh, what a surprise. And, and you kind of like just get on with it, because I'm one of these people that are constantly reaching for things. And, and milestones, but then when you get them, you kind of like reaching for the next milestone, uh, and that's how I sort of get motivated. So it was one of those things I was really, really pleased, but it didn't really sink in. And only now, I think, you know, coming on these sort of shows and talking to people about it, I mean, now has it really sunk in. And and and, and I'm going to be invited to a garden party at Buckingham Palace, I believe, sometime next year when we're allowed to, to meet up. Uh, so that would be at the moment, I think, when it all sort of sinks in. How amazing. And, and hopefully some, some more celebrating will ensue once mm. once you've got that medal and you can show everybody. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm very, very humbled. And, and I have to say, I share it with everybody. You know, there has to be a leader, somebody who starts something off. But you can imagine something like the Music Man Project wouldn't have happened if it was just me. You know, I've got some amazing... Uh, members of staff, volunteers, the families, the trustees of the charity uh, for many years uh, have done amazing work to, to help get me where I am. So I owe them this, this award, really. And what next for Music Man? So have you got any plans yet or are you waiting to see what happens with all our restrictions? Yes, well, I mean, during the restrictions, certainly here in Essex, we were, we were very good. We managed to get back in July and teach all the way until Christmas. But obviously at the moment we're now back in a lockdown situation so we can't physically teach one one to one. And and when we were back teaching, it was social distancing and masks and temperature taking and washing our hands every two seconds. It was quite funny, but we but we managed to do it. We we managed to get the students back. But now we you know we can't do that again. So we join most of our other regions around the country uh, in in just trying to do something at home. So I've launched something called MMP Wired. Uh, which is my online offering so people can attend Zoom sessions and Facebook Live and I do video calls. During the summer, I also turned up on their doorstep with my piano accordion just to sort of play and sing to the students from a, from a distance because, you know, you're really difficult to imagine. Lockdown is hard for everybody, isn't it? But if you've got a learning disability, you don't really understand what lockdown, coronavirus, pandemic, social distancing actually means. Mm. Uh, you get very, very confused and you can get very, very scared. And most important, you know, you get isolated. They don't see anybody because they can't and they don't know how to sort of get around these barriers. So to really, it's for them that we are putting this online uh, version of our service in place. And and it's going to have to start again. You know, as of, of Monday, we're back, you know, here in my music room with my piano singing into a screen, hoping that people out there are, are being entertained and engaged. Well, I wish you every success with that, and congratulations on your BEM medal, yes, David. Congratulations, that's an inspirational story. And thank you so much for taking time out of your morning to talk to us. 
It's an absolute pleasure, and keep up the good work yourselves, and Happy New Year. And to you. We're now going to play um, a song that you've, you've done with Music Man called Music is Magic. Wonderful. But today, I'm really pleased to say that we are joined by the Music Man's Project's founder and director, David Stanley. Now, David has been awarded a British Empire Medal uh, and he is in the New Year's Honours list. Congratulations. Uh, and he is. He, wow, I know. So he is now a medalist of the Order of the British Empire. And David is here today to talk to us about that honour and the continuing great work of the Music Man Project. Good afternoon, David. Well, good afternoon, Natalie, and, and hello, Phil, and Happy New Year to you both. Happy New Year. Congratulations on the, the New Year's honour. Hopefully uh, you'll be able Thank to pick you. it up in person. Yes, at some point, whenever that will be. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I'm looking forward to that moment, certainly. Yeah, it's a, it's a big question mark on your calendar at the moment, but hopefully yes, we'll see yes. it this year at least. <laughs> Fantastic. So, so David, that must have been a, a wonderful, um, you know, a wonderful honour to be bestowed. But you've been you've been mm. uh, doing brilliant things with the Music Man Project um, for a while now, haven't you? You've uh, You've even performed at the London Palladium and Royal Albert Hall. Can you tell us a little bit more about the project? Yes. Well, I mean, it, it's all started 20 or so years ago. And I and I just had a, a friend who had Down syndrome and I used to take him out to to watch football or go horse riding or anything he wanted to do. It, it was called a shared leisure scheme. And as a musician, and at that time I was studying at university, uh, I sort of introduced a bit of music to him and, and sort of just to see how he got on with it. And he absolutely loved it. And, and you know, it was like one of those moments that sort of penny drops and you go, gosh, this is really enjoyable. And I, I like doing music with, with, with people with learning disabilities. And so that one uh, friend turned into about five or six students. And one day I, I, I turned to them all and I said, you know what, one day you'll play the Royal Albert Hall. Uh, and it was a bit of a joke, but then as, as time went on and, and I set up a, a Saturday music school with, with the local charity South End Mencap, uh, that sort of developed and the idea really took hold. And in 2012, I decided to leave my job at the time as a, as a deputy head teacher in a, in a mainstream school. And I set up the Music Man Project as a full-time operation in Essex. Um, you know, we work for five days a week and, and teaching five hours plus a day. And um, the student numbers built up and up and up. And then we performed in big concerts locally. And then we did the London Palladium in 2015. Then again in 2017. And, and then last year, that promise I made to those handful of students didn't just come true for them. It came true for 200 Music Man Project students taken from right across the country as we performed to 3,000 people at the Royal Albert Hall. And as you can imagine, that was a, a night to remember for me and, and for a lot of people, including, of course, the wonderful Music Man Project Kent, who were there in force uh, as well with us. Um, but it just shows you if, you, if you have a big dream right at the beginning, even with very small numbers, then it can really all happen in a big way. Absolutely. You know, dreams can come true. And yes. as you've mentioned it, shall we have a little listen? So this is the Music Man Project's charity sh single and also your theme song, Music is Magic. Yes. Wonderful. Cheese. 
the Music Man Project. Music is magic. It's BBC Radio again. Natalie Eckersall is bringing us the latest entertainment news. And we're also joined on the line by David Stanley, who's recently been awarded the Medalist of Order of the British Empire. He's from the Music Man Project. Um, how did it? How long did it take to get that recording together, David? Well, for that one, um, that was... Uh, gosh, back in 2015 when we performed at the London Palladium for the first time and uh, I, I wrote the song and then we had to uh, record the band, which we did and then uh, we got someone came down to uh, Essex uh, to record all the different tracks but it, it, it took quite a while, as you can imagine to put all that together uh, but the process was great and it was wonderful for our students to take part in it and what's funny is that um, on the night of the Palladium, when, when we actually released it as a charity single, it actually topped the Amazon Broadway chart, uh, just, uh, and it knocked off Angela Lloyd Webber's Broadway oh. hits for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that is a claim to fame. Everyone loves a winner, a number one artist, and you've, you'll always have that. You, I you, put, that an, hour, yeah. you put Andrew Lloyd Webber into second place. Exactly. Well done, we you. We did on the Amazon charts, which I always, <laughs> I always tell people with great pride. <laughs> Good on you. So, David, you know, this project is run by volunteers and your charity, it gives grants for accessible arts education, promotes yeah. equal access to performance, carries out research and, and most importantly, raises awareness of the achievements of disadvantaged people in the arts. That's so important, isn't it? That the, the kind of accessibility and inclusivity is out yeah. there for everyone to enjoy music and also show their talents. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it, lots of people would have heard of accessible performances where if you have a disability, you can go and see a, a professional show and they change it, don't they? Slightly take the light, bright lights out and the noises and things. But but for for to be able to go to a, a performance, a music concert or a theatre performance, which is actually featuring performers with learning disabilities so they are the stars of the show um i think that is because well it's very unique uh, on the scale that we are we have been doing it um and that is exactly my, the purpose of the project it's it's educational it's not, not music therapy i'm not a music therapist i'm all about training people to be musicians and respected musicians in their own right uh, and and but also it is about performance as you say so by having education leading to big public performances we do inspire and educate general society because not a lot of people necessarily know what these guys can do um it's all a lot of it is about what they need all the time and i say to the people they just need the opportunity to show you what they can do and if you if you were there and if you you know you'll be most welcome to come to our next big show we'll certainly be back at the royal albert hall in, in the future but you, you you'll forget disability for those two hours or so you'll just be amazed by these people singing and signing and, and playing a whole range of instruments at uh, the Abbott Hall, we had a 60-piece orchestra uh, supporting them and hundreds and hundreds in, in the choir. Uh, so the sound was terrific, but the stars of the show were musicians with learning disabilities. And I think that sends a huge message. I mean, if you think about the amazing Paralympic movement and what that, that has done for disability awareness, you know, they're not there to show their therapy. They are there as competing athletes to entertain and inspire the public. And there needs to be a similar push in the arts uh, where it is accessible for people with learning disabilities to show you what they can do. And, and, I, and I, I tell you this, you will not come away from a, an, another concert in anything like as, as inspired uh, and as uplifted as, as you would have done if you were at the Albert Hall. Um, David, they really are something. You're doing amazing work, and and we we really do salute what you're doing. And you know what, Nat? Should we when when the Albert Hall is up and running again, and there's a Music Man event on, should we go up there and see it? Oh, let's go. I'm um, absolutely. Please. I cannot wait. <laughs> can I, we'll do it. Can I just a uh, very very quick word because it's very important that as we're on on in Kent there, uh, the Music Man Project in Kent uh, under Sarah. I know you had her early on uh, last year. That she is doing such an incredible job with the Music Man Project, Kent. I mean, it's it's one thing starting a project and having the ideas and writing the music, but you need other people to take it on. And Kent and all across the country, and in fact, we've set up in South Africa, India, Nepal, the Philippines, and America now. But it needs people like Sarah that have got the vision to develop it in her own way, in her own county. And so you should be very proud of what Sarah's achieved with the Music Man Project in Kent. 
David, pleasure talking to you today. You can find out more details, themusicmanproject.com. That's David Stanley. He's just been awarded a medalist of the order of the British Empire, the BEM. See, we've got uh, honours with us uh, today, Nat. Very impressive.